Hi, I'm Kate Snow from Kate's Homeschool Math Help. And today I'm going to show you three ways to interpret remainders um, so that your children can really understand what they're doing when they do division and not just mindlessly write R2 uh, by their problems. So first of all, what is a remainder? Well, sometimes we can divide things up evenly. So here in this example, I have 12 blocks to divide among four people. If we evenly split up the blocks into four groups, we see that there are three uh, blocks in each group. 12 divided by 4 divides evenly. We can say that 12 is divisible by 4 and it equals 3. There is no remainder. Um, but that's not always the case, of course. Uh, if we have 13 blocks, we're going to have a different situation. If we want to divide those 13 blocks up among four kids, we can do the same thing. We uh, share three blocks which, with each person. Um, but then there's this one left. There's one that is the remainder. And so math books typically teach kids to write this as 13 divided by 4 equals 3 R1, where the R stands for remainder. And um, remainder isn't a word we typically use, so don't just assume your kids are going to understand what that means. It's really important to use the hands-on manipulatives and to talk about what this word means, that a remainder is what remains after we have shared everything evenly. So that's what a remainder is. Now we're going to go on to three ways to interpret remainders. Um, this is just a quick overview, and then we'll go into each of them in a second. Uh, we can leave the leftovers, that's the most straightforward case. We can share the leftovers, or we can adjust the answer, uh, depending on what the real life context is for the division problem. Um, so here's an example of leave the leftovers, the most straightforward way to think about remainders. Four children had 13 gumballs to share. How many gumballs did each child get? So here I have my 13 gumballs. And it's the same problem as we were looking at before, 13 divided by 4. So let's divide up these gumballs among four children. Again, each child gets 3, and then there's 1 left. So in this case, you'd probably leave the leftovers. You might give it to somebody else, give it to your mom. Um, and the answer is just 3 with a remainder of 1. One left over, and there's nothing we can really do with it in this case. It's kind of a classic remainder problem. But a lot of time in division, uh, just writing R1 isn't good enough. It doesn't really solve the problem. So here's an example where we need to share the leftovers, and kids need to learn to think a little bit more deeply about what's going on in the problem, not just write that R1 down. Here we're going to share the leftovers. So here's the word problem. Four children work together to earn $13 raking leaves. They split the money evenly. How much money did each child get? So here I am just using these dollar bills to stand for the $13. Anytime you're teaching a problem with money to your kids, it's always fun to have some play money around. And so let's divide up that $13. So each of the four children get $3 and there's $1 left. It'd be very normal for a child who's just been writing R1 and R2 down in their math books to write that the answer to this is 3 R1. But of course I guarantee you that if four children spent $13 raking leaves they're not just going to discard that extra dollar. With this extra dollar here they'd probably get somebody to trade um, it for four quarters and then they'd give a quarter to each of the um, each of the children who helped rake the leaves. So I'm going to add a quarter here just a Q for quarter for each of these um, so each person doesn't just get $3, they actually get $3.25, or $3 plus a quarter. And so that's a case where the leftovers need to be shared. Um, that might also be the case if four children were sharing 13 cookies. Again, I can guarantee you that last cookie is not going to be discarded, um, but it'll probably get split into fourths. And in that case, the answer to the problem would be three and one-fourth cookie. Um, even for children who don't have a lot of experience with the decimals and fractions, it's great to expose them to these problems with easy numbers that will help them to think a little bit more deeply about what division means and just use their common sense to figure out the answers rather than relying on a rote procedure. So our last example here, our last way to interpret the remainder is to adjust the answer. Now we have 13 children who are splitting up into four teams. And the question is how many children are on each team? So now we divide these children up into the four teams, 
and there's one child left. If they're playing something where you have to have three person on a team, well, it's possible that that last child would um, get left out. But I would hope that for most circumstances, um, they would simply add that child to one of the teams, and then the, ans the teams wouldn't be exactly even. So here, the real answer is that there will be three teams with three children each. So it will be three teams of three and one team of four. One of the answers has to be adjusted um, to make it make sense in the context of the problem. So there you have it. It's three ways to interpret remainders that you can leave the leftovers, as we did with the gumballs, uh, share the leftovers, as we did with the money, or adjust the answer, as we did with the kids on the team. Um, I hope you'll share these with your children. Use easy numbers and hands-on manipulatives to help them really understand these three different interpretations and help them really understand division well. Thanks for watching and happy math!